Now, I wanna show you one other thing here on this video on engine bearing. So that's, that's your general rod clearance, main clearance. Main clearance, we'll probably actually loosen this up to about three. So we'll juggle bearing shells around so that we'll put a one on, or a, a extra thousandths clearance bearing in the block and leave the standard bearing clearance in the cap. So that way we'll get a half a thousandths extra vertical clearance right here by actually juggling bearing shells around. So you can have one extra bearing, uh, one under bearing, and then standard bearings all in order to get that perfect uh, clearance that you would like to have. Now, what does, before we go over to that rod bearing, well, actually, let's do the rod bearing first. Rod bearings. There is a upper and a lower. Understand what's going on. Rod bearings, I'm showing you this rod bearing here. There is a upper and a lower to a rod bearing, unless it's a narrow bearing. You can see here, it might be a little tough. You can see a chamfer there. There is not a chamfer there on that side. When we put the improper bearing in the connecting rod, you see there's a connecting rod um, on this connecting rod right here. There is a chamfer. This goes up against the crankshaft. When the cap's on, that side of the rod goes up to the crankshaft to meet the radius in the crank. If you don't have the right side bearing, upper and lower in there, all of a sudden you won't have any side clearance because the bearing will cram right into the edge there. So you see the distance di difference right there? I'll flip that bearing around, put the right bearing in it. Now you can see a whole lot more clearance all there to fit the cheek of the crankshaft, to fit that radius that's in the crank. All right, so now that is always making sure that you're reading the bearing. It's a up has a U or a L on it, or if they're an end bearing, which just means that they're narrow, they still need a upper and a lower. And uh, that's also that they just place that bearing in there correctly, so you have ample clearance for your crankshaft radius. Now, what does uh, excessive oil bearing clearance do? Not much, really. What it what you end up with with a lot of bearing clearance is it will make lower oil pressure because Primarily, it's squirting out right through here. It squirts out in between the rod, it squirts out on the outside cheeks of the rod, and all of this just makes and creates more windage, lowering your oil pressure. If you have enough oil pump, it's not a big deal uh, outside of windage. But like I said, in the big Pro Modified stuff where we have a lot of clearance there, it's throwing a lot of oil around, it just does. In a thousand horsepower LS kind of deal, we're going to be, you know, two and a half thousandths, three thousandths on the main, two thousandths, two and a half thousandths on the rod. And that's a good area, makes good oil pressure, controls oil real well. We don't want to get real tight because as you get really tight on the bearing clearances, uh, it makes excessive heat in the oil because we want flow. The flow through the bearing, the flow through the sides is what cools the oil. Oil going through it makes it cool. So there's a balance there, but in general, on a steel rod, you're gonna be at two, two and a half. Uh, mains, you're gonna be at two and a half, three. That's a good general deal. Pro modified stuff, they get real crazy and we'll get real big clearances up in that six, seven. I've even seen stuff that was upwards of eight. But anyways, good. This is the proper way of checking your clearances. These are the clearances that you need in general for all uh, applications. So. We're gonna be doing more videos, so stay tuned for other stuff. And if you have any suggestions of other things you wanna see, always remember, you can get a hold of us at uh, Steve Morris Engines. And uh, if you're a subscriber, we're more than happy to do some different videos tech-oriented just for you.